16 year old Pragnananda from India is playing in a Super GM tournament for the first time and today he had the white pieces against the Swedish number one Niels Grandelius. So could he score a victory for the first time in the tournament? A great opportunity to do so because even though Niels is a fantastic player he's one of the weaker players in the field given this is a cap 20 Super GM tournament. So we went in for this Grunfeld opening after pawn to d5 here. We had takes in the center, the knight recaptured, pawn to e4, the knight took on c3 here, captures, bishop to g7, and now queen to a4 check. This is a bit of a sideline, but it does have some venom to it as we'll see. So black blocks with the knight here, which is the best way to play and the most common way to play. And this knight often finds a home on b6 or c5 even in later variations. So we'll see how Prague actually plays against this with some subtle opening moves. So we had knight to f3 now, castles from black, and here's where we have a really nice variation from Prague. So the main line here goes bishop e2, and then black will follow up with pawn to c5, a very standard break in these structures. And after, say, castles, captures in the center, pawn retakes, there's this really nice move from black, knight to c5. You take advantage of this pin on the pawn against the rook in the corner. There have been games where white's actually sat to this exchange and played like this, but often you see queen to c2, and it's not so much for black here, uh, for white rather, because black solved this knight problem and is getting quite free and easy development. But if we run back to the game here, I point this out because instead of going bishop to e2, Prague went queen to a3. Really nice stuff. And now you don't have that same variation as black. So we had pawn to c5, we had bishop to e2, but now you can't take, take and go knight c5, or we're simply taking that piece, of course. So instead, after bishop to e2 here, black has to develop in a different way now, and so goes pawn to b6. And now Prague goes for it with pawn to h4. And this is justified in this position instead of castling because white has this central space and it's not so easy for black to get pieces across to defend the king. Say black tried knight f6 here, well now e5 comes and it's all just a bit uncomfortable for black. So coming back here, Nils played pawn to e5 here after h4. Striking in the center, which is very thematic when you're getting attacked on the flank. But by playing like this, you allow Prague to go pawn to d5, creating this passed pawn, and also lumbering black with this bad bishop now, which is staring at its own pawn. That bishop's had its scope greatly reduced now, as we can see, compared to other Grunfeld bishops. So we had knight to f6 now from black. You could have tried pawn to f5 here, possibly for more counterplay, or h6, preparing f5. But okay, knight to f6... And now I really like the way Prague played, very pragmatic. He just goes bishop to g5, and after queen e8, he gives up this bishop pair, black recaptures, and what he's doing with this trade is just leaving black with the bad bishop and saying my minor pieces are going to be better than yours in this closed structure. We now had pawn to h5, and Nils now shows a sign that he's struggling a bit with a plan here. So he goes bishop to g4, Knight to d2 was now played. You want to try and preserve that knight if you can, and you're very happy to trade these light squared bishops. This is white's bad bishop staring at its own pawns in the center. Nils could have taken here, but instead he retreats it now to d7, and Prague simply goes pawn to c4 now, cementing his strong center here and making it very difficult for black to actually maneuver these bishops around in the closed position. So we had queen to e7 now, queen to c3, preparing to move this a pawn, and there's just lots of little improving moves that Prague can play here, so it is tough for black. Bishop g7 comes now, preparing f5, queen to e3. Now that that bishop left f6 and there's no bishop g5, that's why the queen now comes to e3. We had pawn to f5 here, and now h takes on g6, the pawn recaptured, and pawn to a4, now black played bishop to f6 here. If you close the center, which you can do, the problem here is say white moves away, you just have this long-term nagging issue of this bishop being really bad staring at its own pawns, and white has lots of plans to improve the position 
break with pawn breaks like this, use the pass pawn, not a pleasant game. So instead coming back here, bishop f6 was played, now pawn to a5, bishop to g5 came, queen to h3, so watch out down the h-file now, the check is threatened here on h8, queen to g7 dealt with that, and now queen to c3 was played, and here arguably black should have just taken this dangerous knight off, given that bishop up, let's say king takes, you could take this pawn now and just try and generate some play down the f-file, Black is still groveling a bit here after queen e3, and you can't hold this pawn, by the way, because if bishop f5, pawn to g4 comes, but at least here, black might have some counterplay. But okay, Niels didn't go for this. Instead, he went queen to f6 here. We now had bishop to d3, protecting this pawn to clear the way for the knight to move away. Queen to e7, knight to f3. Bishop to f6 now holds this e5 pawn, which is attacked twice queen to c2, and now rook a to c8, it's very difficult for black to do anything active here. If you start pushing these pawns, then your own king position will become very weak. So white now captures on b6 here, pawn recaptures, and now Prague simply plays castles here, which is a really nice move because you take your rook off the h-file, which might feel unnatural, but he recognises that this rook needs to be brought into the game in a different manner now. So now after castles, we had pawn to f4 here. So black wants to try and get some play against the king, but Prague deals with this really nicely with rook to a7, immediately invading on that seventh rank. And if you try and blow white off the board here with say pawn to g5, then the problem is knight to h2 comes. You can't go g4 immediately or you can just take there using this pin against the bishop. And if you try and prepare that move with say queen to d6, well now bishop e2 comes just in time. And white is blockading these light squares really effectively and is just going to emerge with this really strong minor piece of the knight once these bishops get exchanged. And we'll see themes of this in the game here. So instead of g4, uh, g5 rather, we had queen to d6 breaking that pin. Now we had bishop to e2, bishop to d8, knight to h2, setting up this blockade as mentioned, bishop to c7, and now Prague gets the bishops off. After the rooks double, king g7, bishop g4. These ones get chopped off, and now look at this minor piece. It just absolutely dominates this dark squared bishop. So we had rook to f7, pawn to f3, and now black has to try and drum up some play against the white king here. So rook h8 prepares that. We had queen b2, reminding black of this weakness here. Rook h5, rook to b7, so preparing to double on that seventh rank. Queen d8, and now the other rook invades. A beautiful invasion by Prague. And there's big ideas now of chopping this bishop and then taking on e5, using that exchange sacrifice. So the king came back to g8, we had king to f2, rook to h1, and now the players have reached time control, that's move 40. So Prague took a second here. The reason rook to h1 was played is because it now sets up queen to h4 check, and then there's ideas of coming down to e1, not what you want. But Prague recognises this counterplay, he could play king e2 here, still very good for white, instead he plays rook to a1. Just squashing the black play, black doesn't want to exchange here or he's just getting positionally crushed. So he drops the rook back to try and keep some counterplay on the king side. But now rook takes on c7, really thematic exchange sack. That piece is recaptured. If you retook with the queen, well then the knight could chop here anyway. As the rook takes, now the queen dives in. We had rook f7 and queen e6, just further invasion, hitting here, hitting here. And the problem here for black is this, if you try and hold everything together with say king to g7, well now the knight invades. You're threatening to take here with check. If you block with the queen like this, well you can actually just liquidate now, and this is a completely winning pawn end game. So coming back here, instead of this, Niels chucks back the exchange by taking on g4, the queen recaptured, king g7, queen e6, queen h4 check, but these are just some token checks really, because after queen to g5 now, Prague does this dance with the king where he protects the pawn. We had queen h4 threatening here, king g1, and now the king is just safe as houses. 
So Nils actually seeks to trade off the queens here, go in for this end game, trying to hold it, but it's completely lost. He maybe thought he was getting counterplay against this one, but as we'll see, this just isn't enough because after king d4, rook d1 check, you can't actually take this pawn or this is completely winning. If the rook blocks, e5 comes, game over. So coming back here, we didn't have king takes. The king groveled back to e5. Now we had rook a1, king d4, another check. And after it came back, now king d3 stops that invasion, frees up the rook. So black tries rook a7, but now the white king just comes across to that a file. g5, king b3, g4, and we had pawn to d6 now completely winning the game. So we had this exchange on f3, the king came back to e6, but d7 was played anyway, because Prague is just liquidating down now, and here after king to c6, pawn to e5, Niels resigned. If you enjoyed this game, then do click here to subscribe to the channel, and to see more amazing Tartar Steel games, click here. Thanks very much for watching, and see you soon.